In today's video, we continue with our 2D phase rig series. Uh, this one is highly requested. As you might have noticed, the previous rig didn't quite support in-betweens. It was based on constant interpolation. Uh, and today we're going to look how we can make mouse shapes with an actual rig so we can have in-betweens and a more smooth 2D phase animation. So this is the usual rig. We got the phase controller right here. <laughs> you can see how we did this in a previous video. The mouth is set up with a couple of modifiers, a shrink wrap modifier, a solidify modifier, and a subdivision. It is important to note that the modifier stack is a stack, so it works from the top to the bottom. So what comes first is applied first, and what comes after is applied after, of course. <laughs> and we're going to use that to our advantage in this video. So we're going to isolate the mesh. I adjusted the topology of the mouse shape a bit, so to accommodate for the rig. I don't know if this is the perfect topology, but for this tutorial it will do. So there is quite some room for experimentation on your behalf as well. And of course your starting mouse shape could be totally different, so um, try and figure out what works for your case. We isolated this mouse shape, and I'm gonna start with making a bendy bone, because that's the base of this whole rig. I'm using Shift A, say armature, and select single bone. And I'm starting from the top of the mouth. Oh, let me turn on screencast for you. Roughly place it in shape and get the size right. So when we got the size right, we can make our bendy bone. Uh, and later on, we're gonna drag the bendy bones to the corners of the mouth. But first we're gonna build up the bendy bone rig itself. I like to start by subdividing the single bone. I wanna subdivide two, so we have three bones in total. I scale up the middle one and leave the other ones to be the endpoints. I'm gonna select all the bones, go over to the armature tab, viewport display, and display as B bone for bendy bones. The bendy bones are a bit too thick, so I'm gonna scale them down. You can shrink them down with Ctrl Alt S, or, or you can go to the bone panel in the display size X or Z, adjust the size accordingly. So the top part of this rig is the tail. The middle bone is what is gonna deform the rig, and this bone is the start controller. Select the top bone, and say clear parent in edit mode. And now the deforming bone is disconnected from the tailbone, the end bone. And in pose mode select first the tailbone and then the deforming bone, press Ctrl Shift C and say, oh sorry, I did track two, uh, Shift Ctrl C and say stretch two. Right, and now you can stretch the deformation bone uh, using these controller bones. If you don't like to work with short keys, you can select the middle bone, go to the bone constraints tab and say stretch two. And now we have to assign the target and that is gonna be this bone. So target, first you have to select the rig, then the bone and the bone is gonna be bone one. I probably should rename these. <laughs> but first select the deformation bone, go to the bone panel and in the bendy bone section, set the segments to 12 or whatever you like. And now this deformation bone has some more resolution, right? You can use the controller points to move them around and bend the deformation bone. To get the rotation working properly, you go to the bendy bone section, scroll a bit down and set the start handle and the end handle to absolute. Right, <laughs> first rename this, otherwise it's gonna be a bit difficult to understand. So this is the start bone and this is gonna be the end bone. And for the sake of this, let's call the middle bone the death bone for deformation. Okay, let's get back into it. Select the deformation bone. All right, go to the bone tab, scroll a bit down for the end handle in the custom field. <clears throat> in the custom field, set the end bone and like, and likewise, in the start handle, you can say start. And now the rotation of the start bone, the start controller, if you will, is a bit nicer. The curve is a bit better. With our bendy bone complete, we can now move on and place it accordingly. So I wanna start on screen left of this mouth. I go into wireframe mode because I need to select this controller as well. With them both selected, I can snap to the corner of the mouth. I want to say cursor to select it for this point as well. 
and then <clears throat> in edit mode rotate around the cursor like so. I want to angle it like this. Right. Do the same thing for the start bone. So cursor to selection and turn it 90 degrees in this case or minus 90 degree. It's not entirely perfect, but that's okay. Now, if you switch back to pose mode, don't be scared. This is all perfectly fine. Select the middle bone and go to bones, uh, go to the bone constraint tab and reset the original length by clicking on this X. And now the length is reset and you have a perfectly working bendy bone. I'm going to rename this quickly to upper lip so that the naming corresponds with the upper lip controls. <laughs> and now with everything properly renamed using dot L, we can use symmetrize in the armature settings. It's right there. And that will do the hard work for us, copying it and renaming to screen right. If you're not quite happy with how your bone is aligning to the mesh, you can go into edit mode and in the bendy bone section, use this curve in for X or curve out for X to adjust the, um, the curve a bit. <laughs> now I'm going to quickly do the lower lip. That is basically the same thing, snapping the controllers into the right position, adjusting the tilt, and then resetting the length of the deformation bone selecting all of the lower lip section and say symmetrize. And now we have a full easy mouth rig. How the rig is set up right now, in this case, you have to individually rotate the controller points. That is not a problem, that's actually what we want. However, we don't want two controllers to move the mouth corners. That's a bit, that's a bit confusing if you ask me. So what you could do is select both of the corner controllers and say Control Shift C, you get the constraints menu and usually you would go child of. And for a good measure, you can say set inverse. However, what this will do is parent one controller to the other one. So the location and rotation are all copied from one controller to the other. So what this means for when you're animating is that you have to counter animate one controller every time. So what I suggest you do instead is the same thing, select both corners and with one active, say Control Shift C to get into the constraints menu and then choose copy location. And now we can individually rotate the corner pieces, but they move with each other. Right, this is working perfectly. Let's do it on the other side as well. So select both of them, Control C, copy location, and we can pose them like we want. We got our rig in place and now it's time to get a bit more organized. So I'm going to select the deformation bones and move these bones using M to the second layer. Because in the end, when you're animating, you only want to see the control bones. For now, I'm going to bring them back because we, of course, need to see what we're doing while rigging this or skinning. With the cursor at the middle of the upper lip, I'm going to create a new single bone. What I'm going to do is roughly size it up to resemble a controller of the upper lip and do the same thing on the bottom. It's a bit big, so I have to scale it down. And there you go. These are gonna be our two controllers for the upper and lower lip. What I want to do now is I want to select these controllers at the bottom. Lastly, the new controller we made and say Control P and make it apparent. And do the same thing for the top controller as well. You don't have to say connected because that will actually mess up the orientation of your deformation bone. What I'd like to do now is grab the four old controllers and move them to a third layer that we don't need to see ever again. And now we have all the controllers we need on one layer. All right, at this point, we just have to say select the mouth and select the rig, then Ctrl P and usually I just go with, with automatic weights. And that will do a decent job. Our mouth is now roughly weight painted or skinned whatever you want to call it, and we can start posing up our mouth. While we are doing that, you can see that there are some things we need to fix. So I go into edit mode, go back to the modifiers tab and say enable all of these so we can see all the deformation changes that our modifier, that our armature modifier made in edit mode. 
Usually if I start weight painting, I'm gonna move my mesh into a position I know it's gonna be in while I'm animating. So for example, we moved up the upper lip and we can see that there are some distortions in the lower part of the mesh. We need to clean that up, of course. So in weight painting mode, I'm gonna go through all the vertex groups and see what I can clean up. So for example, if I go to the upper lip, I can see that it painted on the lower lip as well. I need to clean it up by, by using the subtract brush. If you want to see how I use this rig to animate a lip sync, leave a comment down below and I will create a new part to this series. And of course you need to do this for the lower lip as well. You select the lower lip and see what parts of the upper lip are affected by, by the lower lip deformation bone. We have a decent rig right now. Now that we have our weight painting done, we can start posing our mesh. For example, I want to make an O shape. And I can clearly see that there is something wrong with this weight painting and I'm not sure what it is. So like I said at the beginning, keep experimenting with your topology and also with your weight painting uh, to get it right before the sake of this tutorial, it's fine. What I did is I used a smooth modifier and I placed it somewhere between the solidify and the subdivision and started messing around with the repeat and the factor and then use that to smooth out the corners. Right, I went back into posing the mesh and then I just noticed that I should focus on the right side and copy it over to the left side. So that's an easy trick, you can remember, select both bones, say Ctrl C, copy pose and then Ctrl Shift V, paste it in the mirrored position. Like I said, you can play around with the smooth modifier. So something like this is good. <laughs> this is a, a very wide O shape. Uh, so I could scale it down a bit, but in this example, I didn't do it. And instead I went to the armature tab, looked up the pose library, unfolded it with this plus sign at a new pose. You can rename it, and in this case, this is gonna be a O. It's gonna be a big O. <laughs> For example, I have this sheet of different mouth shapes and eye shapes I like to use. And I'm, and I'm gonna reference these to create a couple of mouth shapes. Whoa, this is a happy little accident. I just reset the rotation and it gave me pretty much the U shape. So that is perfect. I'm just scaling it down a bit. So when I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go over to the pose library and hit the plus sign again. Yeah, add new and say U. Resetting the scale, rotation and location. So now I can show you how to use the pose library. You go to the pose library and click on this magnifying tool and this will recreate the saved pose. Once again, let me reset all of these. Yeah, I went ahead and made a different shape. It's gonna be an M shape or a B or something at least with a closed mouth. And as you can see, it's all wobbly. So what I did is I adjusted the repeat factor and I keyed the repeat factor so I can switch between them. So for example, for the O shape, the repeat factor of 10 is way too much. Uh, and there I used two or I don't know, three, I can't remember right now but in conjunction with each other, you can create a whole spectrum of mouth shapes. You just have to keep in mind that you have to keyframe your factor your, or whatever you use the repeat and your pose. And if you keep those on the same spot on the timeline, copy them over when you use them again and work from there. So lastly, I select all the controllers of this mouth rig so not the ones that are parented to the corner controllers. I select them all and select lastly the face rig or the face controller that we made in a previous video and I parent it to that one. And now when we move this controller, you can see that it moves the whole face around. What is so great about this is that we use the modifier stack to our advantage. As you can see, we applied the armature modifier first. So all the deformations we made are made on a plane. So it's literally a 2D animation. 
And after that, we use the shrink wrap modifier to project this onto the face. That is going to be held in place by the controller we made in a previous video. I purposely done this in this order to avoid getting deformation mistakes. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content. And as always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.